I used to overlook this concept in React.js, and to be completely honest, I still overlook it to this day. And I can tell you firsthand, it, it causes issues and it can cause just kind of tricky to solve bugs. And it's going to seem obvious in the examples that I show you here in just a little bit of what's going on. But in a large scale production environment, it can be a much more nuanced and kind of very difficult to understand what's going on. And we're going to end with something that I think you really, really need to keep in mind when using React.js that has saved me a ton of headache. So the concept we're going to talk about here today is keeping components pure. And you're going to see this is straight from the React.js docs. Now, I'm not just going to read the docs here. We are going to go over the docs a little bit just to kind of see what the source of truth says, what the React official docs say. But we're also going to look at an example as well. So let's first jump to the section to where they talk about keeping components pure. So what does like a pure function mean overall? Well, it means that a function does not change any objects or variables that existed before it was called. And it also means that given the same inputs, a pure function should always return the same result. So not to get super mathy with you as, you know, I'll be the first one to say my, my math isn't always mathing, but Consider this formula, y equals 2x. Well, if x equals 2, then y equals 4. Always, no matter what. Like that is um, a mathematical formula. And if x equals 3, well, then y needs to always equal 6. Always. So this is kind of showing you that this pure function component is kind of based off of mathematical concepts around formulas to where if X is this and Y is this, then the result always needs to be this. And if we turn this into JavaScript code, you could see that if you had a function double and you pass in an argument called number and you return two times a number, then if you pass the function three, it's always going to return six. If you pass the function four, it's always going to return eight. And I'm going to stop there with examples so I don't make an embarrassing mathematical error. But React is designed around this concept and it assumes that every component you write is a pure function. This means that for a React component, given the same inputs, which in React's case, this is going to be called props. Props are basically the arguments you pass to a component. Given the same props, then the resulting JSX or the resulting HTML that is rendered to the page should always be the same. And they show an example of this, but I think it's more illustrative to show you an example of what it looks like when it's wrong. So they show this example here, but I'm going to head to VS Code and I've created my own example here to where I, I basically used their example, but just customized it for stuff that's more related to me, I guess. So I just have this, and this is in Next.js, but it's using React. It's technically in the server component, but that's not going to matter until we get to a later example here. But I have my home component, and then I'm rendering this other component called money I want to spend on my truck because I go down these rabbit holes of different hobbies that I basically want to spend all of my money on certain hobbies. So I'm getting into like off-roading and stuff like that lately, which you know, is what it is. It's way too expensive and I can't afford anything, but this is the represents the money I want to spend on upgrading my truck. As you can see, this is the money I want to spend on my truck component. And we have this money variable here, but then we're setting money is equal to money plus 100 every time this component renders. And then we're rendering out an H2 that says, I'd love to spend however much money is represented by this variable. But what you're going to see here is that this is an external variable. We are mutating a variable that lives outside of this component, which means that when we render this money, I want to spend component. I render it three separate times. Well, we're going to get a different result for each time we render this component, even with the same arguments. So we're not passing any arguments to this component. So based on like the rules of React, 
we should get the same result every single time we render this component because it takes no arguments. So we're always passing the same arguments. So with the same inputs, it should render the same output. But if we go to localhost 3000 here, what you're going to see is that component one renders, I'd love to spend $200. Component two renders, I'd love to spend $300. And component three renders, I'd love to spend $400, which all of those are true. I'd actually like to spend a lot more money than that. Given the same inputs to all three of these components, they render a different result here each time. And if I refresh this page, you're going to see some more weird stuff. If I refresh this, you see 500, 600, 700. If I refresh again, 800, 900, 1000. So it's just rewriting this local state and counting up. But if I now, if I kill my server here and I run npm run dev, and then I come back to localhost and I refresh now, it resets it back to 200, 300, 400 because I've reset my kind of local state there. So clearly this is like a confusing behavior to have within your applications. So you definitely don't want to do something like this. And this is kind of the most straightforward example of mutating something external and then seeing a different result and not having things be pure. It gets even more tricky if we're like passing a certain prop here and then we're mutating props within this component and it's changing the result in other components and it can just get really hairy when you start to make certain mutations like that and you're overriding props and it's just generally not a good idea. Now, what would be an easy way to solve this? Well, we can just pass a prop here. So we can just say money is equal to 200 and then we will pass another prop below, pass another prop below, and then we'll do 300 and 400. And then we'll just remove this here. And then we will accept money as a prop and just destructure it right there. Get rid of that. And now we should see 200, 300, 400, which we do see. And then say I pass, you know, 400 to this one. Well, it should render out 400 which it does. We see 200, 400, 400. We don't see that behavior of, you know, 100, 200, 300. When I refresh this, we see it stays 200, 400, 400. So just passing it as a prop and not making those mutations fixes this particular issue. And it kind of covers this a little bit more here to where it says you can just pass it as a prop instead. And then they show doing that. One thing to keep in mind is that for a local mutation, that is actually okay. So in the example I just showed you to where we were editing a external variable money, well, that's, that's not great because we're mutating an external variable. But in the case to where we are changing variables or objects that we've just created while rendering, that is actually completely okay. So if we go back to our example, what do I mean by this? Well, if I create another variable within this component, so say I create a variable called upgrade amount. So I'm going to say let upgrade amount, and then we will just make it an empty variable. And then I'll say let text, and then I will initialize this to, I would love to spend no money by default, which in reality, it's not true. I'd love to spend all the money. But by default, we'll, we'll set it to this. But now, what I can say is, if money, then, and this doesn't make a ton of sense because we could just use money here, but for the sake of this, I'm just showing you that this would be fine to do, is mutating these variables that we're declaring within this component, within the rendering of this component. I will just set upgrade amount. Let's just, to make it a little bit different than money, which also doesn't make a ton of sense. And I'll say it's 10 plus money. And then if there is money and there's an upgrade amount, I'm going to also reinitialize text. It's equal to, I would love to spend dollar sign curly brace upgrade amount. And then instead of just rendering this out, I'll 
just render out my text. And I need to make sure to put that in curly braces. So what I'm doing here is, yeah, we are mutating variables here. We're mutating upgrade amount and text, but we're doing that within this components of render cycle. So we are deriving this state based on this prop here. So we're not actually mutating anything external to this component. All of this is local within this component. So this is still maintaining our kind of pure function here. So if I just render these, we should see like 210, 410, and 410. So let me come back, go to localhost. We see 210, 410, and 410. But if I change one to zero, like so, then we should just see the default text because money is zero, a falsy value. So we should see, I would love to spend no money. And I do see for our first one, I would love to spend no money. So this is still a pure function that is totally fine to do. So don't, don't confuse like mutating local variables with mutating external stuff. I know it gets a little bit confusing there, but it, it only matters that it doesn't mutate variables outside of the function scope or objects that were created before the call and then say passed as a prop to that component. It's completely fine to change variables and objects that you've just created while rendering. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, that's cool and all, but at some point, something's probably going to need to change. So we're going to need to cause some side effects. And this is where like that that tip that I mentioned earlier is really going to come into play because React mentions that side effects should usually belong in event handlers. And event handlers are functions that React runs when you perform some action. For example, when you click a button, even though event handlers are defined inside your component, they don't run during rendering. So event handlers don't need to be pure. That's it's a very important thing to keep in mind there. So let me go ahead and show you an example of this. I'm going to use some state here, which means I'm going to make this just a client component. This is a Next.js specific thing, not a React specific thing. But for this home component, let's just create a, well, maybe we'll do it within this money I want to spend on my truck. So I'm going to say const upgrade amount set upgrade amount is equal to use state importing that from React, and I'm going to default it to money. So it's going to start with whatever money variable we enter here, but then I'm going to render, let's go ahead and return a couple of things here. So I'll just do a div for a wrapper component and say money needed for, and then let's pass an upgrade title prop, and then I will render out our upgrade amount and then make sure to include a dollar sign here so here i will also render upgrade title and then let's also pass upgrade title here for all these so i'm going to say suspension i'm going to copy this paste it here tires paste this here and then do wheels for this one we are going to allow the user to increase the money they need for this upgrade. So I'm going to also render a button that is going to say, I need more money. And then when they click on this button, so on click, we're going to pass a function that it's going to set the upgrade amount to the rev amount, but we are going to take the prev amount and add it's at 100 to it. So if they click on, I need more money, it's going to set this upgrade amount and then increment this. So clicking on this button is going to affect what they see on the page, which is, you know, technically affecting the outside world or being a side effect. But the important thing to remember here is that when this component renders, we're not automatically running this set upgrade amount, meaning we're not running this effect during the render cycle of this component. We're only running this effect when the user clicks on this button during an event, which in React, what's important is that you don't have effects 
during the rendering cycle of this component, except for when you absolutely need to use something else, which we'll talk about in a second. So if we look at our local host here and I click on, I need more money that we see by styling is impeccably beautiful. Everything works as expected here. It does reset when I refresh because we're just using local state here. We're not persisting it to local storage, but it resets it back to its original number. Like we would expect. It doesn't start doing like weird things and incrementing the count. All these are individually to each other. So everything looks like it's working here correctly. So for the most part, if you need to have side effects like this, it's best to do them during some sort of event handler because this event handler only creates the side effect when that event occurs, not when this component just gets rendered. That's where a lot of those issues come from. Now, to finish here, React does mention that if you've exhausted all other options and can't find the right event handler for your side effect, you can still attach it to your return JSX with a use effect call in your component. This tells React to execute it later after rendering when side effects are allowed. However, this approach should be your last resort. When possible, try to express your logic with a rendering alone. You'll be surprised how far this can take you. And this is like the biggest tip here that I kind of alluded to earlier. Really, use effect it's confusing. I've been using React for several years. And in my professional job, it's not like I'm using use effects every single day. So because of the more kind of complexities when it comes to using use effect, I always forget about those complexities between the time I need to write one. So often it's best to just default to not using them whenever possible and trying to just have your effects be from event handlers. And, you know, I'll be the first to say, if you have a component in your application that is using like eight or nine different use effects, I'm guessing that that is a headache component for you because things just get a little bit tricky there. So try to keep those events in event handlers opposed to using use effect. Now, as one just final thing to finish on, why does React care about this kind of purity when it comes to effects? Well, your components can run in different environments, for example, on the server as we actually demonstrated with server components here a second ago in Next.js. Since they return the same result for the same inputs, one component can serve many requests. Also, React can improve the performance by skipping rendering components whose inputs have not changed. This is safe because pure functions always return the same results, so they're safe to cache, which is also a very important consideration. And then if some data changes in the middle of a rendering, a deep component tree, Rat can restart rendering without wasting time to finish the outdated render. Purity makes it safe to stop calculating at any time. So if you have a component that's deeply nested in your tree and you have some sort of data change, well, React doesn't really need to worry about, you know, finishing that render and then restarting the render cycle of that deeply nested tree, it can just stop and restart because purity makes it safe to just stop the calculation and kind of restart wherever. And every new React feature that they're building takes advantage of, of purity, which means that they are making assumptions when writing new features that you're kind of following this concept. And if you're not, you can run into weird stuff that will make you think that React is just weird. When in reality, I think a, a lot of times for me, it was just that I didn't understand React well enough and I wasn't as good with it as I should have been. And that caused me some frustration with using React when really the, the answers were right in front of me. I just didn't know about it. So hopefully this video helps, helps you out and kind of provide some guidelines when using effects, keeping things pure. And I hope it provides a little bit better kind of understanding for those things. So thanks for tuning into this. And I'll see you in that next one.